<laughs> of course, that match was an instant classic. But Justine, which match of yours wasn't a classic? Oh, you're way too kind, Robin. To point out that very real truth. Were you nervous at all? Me? Nervous? <laughs> of course not. I had that match on lock. In fact, I was always calm, cool, and collected from my first day in the ring to my sixth championship victory. Watching my first title win again. <laughs> After you talked it up so much on your podcast this week, how can I not? Don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic match. I just figured you had it memorized by now. Sure, but it's a tradition at this point. Is it my favorite aunt? Only aunt. Watch her most epic victories. And now also stress about what I have to live up to in my debut at Survivor Series tomorrow night. <laughs> uh, why are you laughing? Oh, nothing. Just that if I didn't know better, I'd say you were nervous, which is super hilarious. Because I know that I didn't teach my favorite niece. Only niece. To be nervous about getting in the ring and doing what she does best. Yeah. Especially not when she's been trained by one of the biggest legends in the business. If I'm being honest, there's really no comparison. <laughs> you really do manage to turn everything into a compliment about yourself, don't you? Of course I do. I'm a six-time women's champion. Would have been ten if my career hadn't been cut short by injury. I get it. A main eventer and Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who had the top merch sales in the 2003 fiscal year. Okay, you've made your point. I should get ready for tomorrow. That's my girl. As the mystery SmackDown competitor, shouldn't I have been shuttled in secretly or something? The whole golf cart with the black sheets get up? Don't worry about it. No one knows who you are. Yet. No one knows who you are yet. Tom. Justine. And LJ, too? It's so good to see you both. Same here, Tom. Wait, do you even still go by LJ? Man, it was always a hoot and a half having you backstage when you were a kid, dressing up in Justine's gear, being her shadow, her little Justine. But suppose you're not eight anymore, huh? It's fine. But I am trying to get known on my own here. I've heard. Good thing you're debuting tonight. The secret's pretty much out backstage. A few more hours and it'd be out to the entire WWE universe. You doing something here tonight too, Justine? Nope, just here to support my niece's big moment. Come on. Surely you'll find some way to steal the spotlight. <sighs> Molly. Justine. Wow, I, I've got a... I, I, I better go check on the... Uh, yeah, I got no good reason, but I'm gonna leave now. I heard you were working backstage these days. Beat sitting at home, talking to the internet. It's called a podcast, and it's very popular. But I'm not here to resurrect old rivalries. Would you really call it a rivalry if there's a clear conclusion and undisputed winner? I was actually here to greet our newest WWE superstar. Wish her luck. She doesn't need luck. And let her know that I'll be working with her to get her ready for her Survivor Series debut this evening. Is that all right? No, that's great. I'm so excited to be here representing Team SmackDown. Great, get settled and then let's talk. Justine. Please don't make things more difficult for me on my first day. Besides, you two were friends once. Sorry, you're right. It's just, well, you know what she did. It might be ancient history and there's no reason for her to mess with you, but be careful with Molly, okay? I'm gonna go say hello to people. You all right? I'm all right. I'm ready. Yeah, you are. <laughs> I love you, kid. 
You'll do great. Hi, I'm... LJ, Little Justine. Yeah, I overheard. How oh, precious. Yeah, I was actually going to say I recognize you from NXT 2.0. Ava Moreno, right? You had some great matches with Cora Jade. I didn't realize you had gotten drafted to SmackDown. Guess your famous WWE legend aunt hasn't been able to get you up to speed on everything. Honestly, we've been pretty busy prepping for my debut. I'm a little out of the loop on everything else. Who's your match with tonight? I don't have a match on the show tonight. Not all of us are able to skip the line, LJ. Did I do something wrong? What's with the attitude? Let me lay it out for you. A girl named Ava works her whole life to be the best athlete she can be. Excels at some things naturally, puts in the time to get better at the rest gets signed to WWE, continues to grind at the Performance Center doing everything the WWE way, makes a mark on NXT 2.0, wins her matches, and gets signed to SmackDown. Sounds pretty great, right? What's your point? Some of us work hard. Some of us work harder. And some of us, LJ, get to waltz into Survivor Series and get put into a match that the rest of us those of us who have done everything by the book would kill for. My aunt is a legend, but I'm good at this. I got here on my own. I'm not just some nepotism signing. <laughs> got here on your own? We'll see what happens tonight. Maybe you are good, and you'll prove that. Regardless, I haven't been given the same opportunity on this brand to prove how good I am. So excuse me if I don't play nice with little Justine, the legacy hire. I hope you don't think we're going to be friends. I certainly won't be taking it easy on you tonight. Why would you think I'd want to be friends with you? Because we both come from famous WWE lineage. But let's be real, we're not the same. You're right. I'm better than you, both in the ring and out. Ugh. I have a lot of respect for your aunt. You, not so much. You're only here because you're cashing in on her legacy. But do your best not to make all of us second generation superstars look bad, okay? Though it's gonna be hard tonight when you're competing against me and the rest of Team Raw. Hey, nice to finally meet the EST of WWE. What? Isn't that you? <laughs> As in new S superstar in WWE, ready to show Team Raw what's up tonight? You know it. That's exactly what I'm here to do. Now that's the confidence I like to hear. And remember, the rest of Team SmackDown has your back. Although, ideally, we would have at least met each other to get on the same page before today. Yeah, they said they were really trying to keep my debut a secret. I get it. I mean, the WWE Universe is going to lose their minds when they realize you're related to Justine. And don't think I'm not going to fangirl out and grill you after we win. You gotta tell me exactly what she's like. Listen, I love my aunt. I even spent summers traveling with her on tour growing up but it's important for me to make my own mark in WWE. Hopefully I can do that tonight. You know the EST is all about standing out, so I understand completely. See you out there tonight. We got this. Sorry I wasn't able to check in with you sooner. It's always nuts backstage before a major show. And I lost a full 20 minutes to Happy Corbin, who wanted to practice a stand-up routine on me. 
Luckily, Xylee overheard and protected me from his bad jokes. How are you doing? Feeling good about tonight? Honestly, I'm ready. I've trained my whole life for this. All right. Let's take that confidence, earned or not, and channel it into a great debut. For what it's worth, despite my history with your aunt, it really is my goal to help you succeed here. You guys have some history, huh? That's a conversation for another day. Stick around here long enough and you'll have history with everyone. Alliances, rivalries, heck, we even have our fair share of weddings. Although those rarely seem to work out. But let's talk about your debut. I've got your custom gear ready. Custom gear? What do you mean? Honestly, I get it. I wouldn't want to debut in it either. No, I mean I have no idea what you're talking about. Huh. Not sure how this didn't get to you, but WWE management asked that you debut in a look that honors Justine's legacy. So they've made gear inspired by what your aunt wore when she won her first championship. Not that that specific match would be the moment I'd choose to commemorate. Justine got lucky. But I brought my own gear. I designed it myself. Besides, I'm not sure if I want to use my aunt's image to establish my own. I want to make my own mark. Listen, despite my personal feelings, it never hurts to get a rub from a WWE legend. It's also probably not wise to go against management on day one. But I know it's important to stand on your own two feet around here. Ultimately, the decision is yours. What do you want to do? I love my aunt and she taught me a lot, but if I'm going to make it here, I need to make my own mark. I'm going to wear the gear I designed. All right, we'll see how management reacts. Standing your ground can really go either way around here. But if you're determined to make your own mark, you better have the performance out there to back it up. Go get changed, it's go time. Kick to the midsection. She certainly has the confidence of her aunt. Looks like she's setting up for the Justine Jammer. She's putting her own mark on an old classic. Not if Charlotte Flair has anything to say about it. You only have one chance to make a first impression, and this one might include a hurt ankle. And Rhea's taking advantage. Riptide! Cover by Ripley! Rhea got her. With the elimination, Team Raw now has the advantage. What a letdown for the Blue Squad. She definitely didn't expect to be out so early in this match. The top rope mishap and apparent ankle injury played a key role in that. And it looks like Charlotte Flair is determined to add insult to injury. Wait a minute, Hall of Famer Justine is here. We haven't seen Justine in a WWE arena for over a decade. One thing is clear, the WWE Universe is thrilled to see this venerated six-time women's champion here tonight in any circumstance. And it looks like Justine is just as thrilled to see them. Things might not have turned out how she wanted for her niece, but she's loving this crowd. I'm just hoping that Justine can get her niece on the right track. After this debut, she certainly needs some guidance. Did you hear that pop? What, the sound of my ankle popping or my career imploding? Oh, how is that ankle? Or more importantly, how's that ego? Ankle's okay. Ego, that's another story. You really went for it out there, huh? Didn't hold back? I'm the niece of one of the most venerated WWE legends of all time. I needed to make my own mark and stand out. I still do. You need to take your time and not overthink this. But you're still learning, and regardless, Charlotte acted out of line. If I was medically cleared for in-ring action, I would put the queen in her place. Believe me, I'm mad about it. But I'm not sure that Charlotte did anything you wouldn't have done. Nah, but one of the perks of having a career-ending injury is getting to apply unrealistic standards on the next generation. Why do you think I liked training you so much? Right. 
<laughs> Listen, I don't want to leave if you need to talk, but I got word that WWE management wants to chat before we head out. Something about the buzz online, whatever that means. You okay? If anyone taught me how to be resilient, it's you. I'm fine. I'll talk to you later. That's my girl. I'll find you in a bit. What was that about? I like to show off as much as the next person, but that was embarrassing. Don't talk to me like that. You certainly don't always have a perfect night. I'll talk to you how I want right now. You just spoiled the match for all of us. Don't expect this to blow over with the SmackDown Women's Locker Room. The Raw women are gonna rub this loss in our faces for a long time. I can't say that was the debut we were hoping for. I don't know what happened out there. I wanted to make a name for myself based on my own talent. And you decided to do something showy, took your eyes off of what was happening, and let Charlotte blindside you. It's not my fault. You told me I had to make an impression in the ring. Listen, you get one brat moment with me and you just used yours up. Yes, you had to make an impression by doing your job, not trying to steal the show on day one. You're here because you're good and you could be great. You could have gone out there and had a solid match and that would have been enough, win or lose, but you bit off more than you can chew. Maybe you're right. Of course I'm right. I'm a WWE legend. I'll do my best at damage control. You're already off to a rough start with management. They weren't thrilled that you decided against wearing the tribute gear. Although maybe I can spin that since it wasn't exactly the performance they would have wanted to be associated with Justine's legacy. Actually worked out for the best. Nope. They'll just associate it with little old me. I've already seen the chatter on social media. Great. You're worried about social media at a time like this? Get your head in the game. I'll see you at SmackDown, and we'll take it from there. But what people forget is that for someone to win, someone else has to lose. It is better to win, though. Of course. Actually, speaking of winning, I have a few developments that Ruthless Digressions listeners will be thrilled to hear about. Oh, care to share with those listeners or your co-host? Like I told my niece at Survivor Series, patience, Robin, patience. LJ, welcome to SmackDown. How you doing? I'm sorry that Survivor Series didn't go so well. Yeah, not the debut I was hoping for. Well, you're here now, and have your whole career ahead of you. Listen, I may just be a cameraman, so I can't help train you, but I've been with WWE long enough that I pride myself on knowing how things work around here. Happy to answer any questions you might have. How do I get a match? Well, you'll want to talk to Molly first so she can let you know what management has in mind for you. But generally, I've found that matches in WWE, whether they come from management or not, get booked in one of two ways. Talking to people or checking your social media messages. What do you mean, talking to people? I mean just that. Aside from being booked by management, you'll find that chatting with other superstars, the crew, or even other backstage visitors can lead to opportunities. Sometimes people might have favors to ask of you, others might have bones to pick. You know how they say it's who you know? That's definitely true in WWE. Who you know and who you talk to. Huh. Seems so easy. It is. Don't try to put too much on your plate, though. You can always tell somebody who wants a favor no and come back to it later, or defuse a tense situation. But once you agree to something, you'll need to see it through. I understand. So take it one thing at a time. Makes sense. And the other way to get matches? You mentioned social media. 
I'm gathering I shouldn't try to go on a social media hiatus while I'm a WWE superstar. Definitely not. Even a dinosaur like me relies on that instrument of the devil. If you don't check your social media, both the public feed and your direct messages, you might miss out on opportunities. Not everything there will lead to a match, but it's worth keeping up with what the WWE Universe is up to. Okay, so check my social media feed and direct messages. Got it. Any other questions? Or anything you'd like me to explain again? How do I improve my skills around here? It's just like the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. The more matches and experience you have in WWE, the better. From there, it's usually up to you to determine how you want to apply what you've learned, whether it's improving your strength, getting better at submissions, or putting more power behind your punches. You get the idea. You said it's usually up to me what I want to improve? Sure is. Occasionally, you'll find that certain kinds of matches will benefit you in a more specific sort of way. But if that's the case, you'll know that going in. Sports Entertainer Insight, I call it. Okay, cool. Any other questions? Or anything you'd like me to explain again? Mm, what would you recommend in catering? Honestly, the tofu. Even if you eat meat, give it a try. The seasoning is incredible. Noted. Any other questions? Or anything you'd like me to explain again? Thanks, Tom. I think I have the info I need. Fantastic. Good luck tonight, LJ. I'm certain I'll see you around soon. Hey! Welcome to SmackDown. Thanks. You know, after what Liv said at Survivor Series, I wasn't sure if I'd be getting the warmest welcome today. Oh, you won't be. But I have a different perspective than the rest of the girls. In fact, I'm actually usually pretty rude to the newbies because, well, I don't want them coming for my SmackDown Women's Championship, but I don't have to worry about you at all. But I plan on coming for that championship. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're hilarious! After your huge mistake in the Survivor Series match, I know that must have been a joke. I don't have to be rude to you at all. We can be friends. I think we're done here. So, I know I didn't exactly get the best start, but I've got my head on straight now and I'm ready to go. That's great to hear. What do you have for me tonight? Now here's something that's less great to hear. WWE management thinks that after everything that's happened, we should take a beat before we put the spotlight back on you. Don't worry, I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. But I need to redeem myself and show the WWE Universe what I can really do. I need at least a little spotlight. I think you might have to settle for no spotlight. Backstage sentiment on you is not good right now. You may be a SmackDown superstar, but you've got an uphill battle if you actually want to be on the show. So my match tonight is... Non-existent. Ah. What can I do? I don't want to just sit in catering. No one does. But this will all blow over. My advice until then? Find some way to make an impact. Be so good in the ring that they can't deny you. How am I supposed to do that if I can't get a match? I said I couldn't get you a match on SmackDown. There are other opportunities to wrestle. Actually, I can pull some strings and get you on main event. You'll need to find an opponent, though. Most of the roster is pretty busy with commitments on SmackDown, and I don't have time to play matchmaker. Pretty busy or pretty mad at me, from the sound of it. Yeah, I may have heard those rumblings. Although, have you met Ava Moreno yet? 
she's pretty new to SmackDown too, and also would have something to gain with a good showing on main event. We've met. I'm not sure she wants to work with me. Neither of you have to work with anyone. You just have to show up and fight each other. Get her to agree to that, and I'll set up the match. If there's some sort of beef between you two, lean into it. No one said the match had to be friendly. Well, if it isn't little Justine. I would say I'm sorry how your big debut turned out, but I don't like to lie. What do you want? Let's cut to the chase. I want a match on main event. Molly said she can get me one if I find an opponent. It sounds like getting that exposure could help both of us. Are you interested? Sure. Great. That was actually easier than I thought. Oh, but let me be clear. I want a match on main event, but not one against you. I want to make an impact here in WWE and make my matches count. It doesn't help me at all to defeat some jobber. What did you just call me? If I wasn't perfectly clear at Survivor Series, I like people who've come up the right way and paid their dues. Not nieces who get handed special treatment because of what family they're a part of. And if that wasn't enough, I certainly don't like you after you proved me right and made a mess of things. Regardless of what you think of me, I don't see how just sitting around and complaining is going to change anything. I know as well as you do that no one else in the locker room is going to help you. You want a match with me? Prove that you have what it takes when you have to work for an opportunity. Pay some dues and stop waltzing around expecting special treatment. I don't waltz. We can agree to disagree, LJ.